Welcome back to MedBoard Visuals, a focused primary care board review where you can relax and study for the boards at the same time. Now, we are presently in the cardiology section, lipid disorders and treatment, subsection PCSK9 inhibitors. And this is a primary care board review. Let us begin. Okay, so here we have the liver and we have liver LDL receptors. And what do LDL receptors do? They grab LDL from the bloodstream and decrease the serum LDL. That's a good thing. But then we have this guy. He actually lives in the liver. I'm PCSK9. I like to grab LDL receptors and cause their early degradation. Look at him. Now I'm going to take you inside the liver to get degraded. Uh oh. If that happens, we're going to have less LDL receptors. And guess what? The LDL, or not as much of it, can get inside the liver. And if we have decreased LDL receptors, this is going to lead to high cholesterol. Okay, so let's now look at this from the perspective of the liver. So we have the liver, the LDL receptors, and PCSK9. Well, guess what? The liver is actually scared. Help! Is there anyone who can help? Oh, look at this. We have a superhero PCSK9 inhibitor is knocking out PCSK9. Thank you, Mr. PCSK9 inhibitor. Wonderful. Guess what? Now there's more receptors and the liver can grab more LDL from the serum. And when this happens, guess what? Low serum cholesterol. Hooray! Now I know I fooled you, but PCSK9 inhibitor is really not a superhero. It's an antibody. And PCSK9 is actually made in the liver and lives in the liver. All right, so we have our doctor here. PCSK9 inhibitors do an excellent job of lowering LDL, even for patients who are already on a statin. The addition of a PCSK9 inhibitor to a statin may decrease LDL by 43 to 64%. PCSK9 inhibitors are now part of the new ACC AHA 2018 cholesterol guidelines. They are recommended for use in very high risk atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease patients for secondary prevention of ASCVD events. Very high risk means a history of multiple major ASCVD events or one major ASCVD event and multiple high risk conditions. All right, so what are the major ASCVD events? These are, number one, acute coronary syndrome within the past 12 months, a history of MI, but not the ACS acute coronary syndrome listed above, history of stroke or TIA, or symptomatic PAD like claudication or previous amputation or revascularization, and history of high risk conditions are any of the listed below. All right, so PCSK9 inhibitors are reasonable add-on meds for patients who meet the following conditions. Very high risk, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease category, already on a high-dose statin, on ezetimibe or maximum LDL lowering treatment, and LDL is still greater than or equal to 70 or non-HDL greater than or equal to 100. Now, what does very high risk mean? It means two or more major cardiovascular disease events or one major cardiovascular disease event and multiple high-risk conditions. Now, this is important, so let's clarify this by giving an example of when to use a PCSK9 inhibitor. So this patient would be categorized in the very high-risk category. Why? Because she has more than one, two major cardiovascular events, acute coronary syndrome and a history of stroke two years ago. And if we look at our criteria for major cardiovascular disease events, acute coronary syndrome, and history of stroke, that's two. So that places her in the category of very high risk, two or more events. All right, next, let's look at her cholesterol meds. She's on atorvastatin, 80 milligrams a day, and ezetimibe, 10 milligrams a day. Okay, so we know that she's in the very high risk cardiovascular disease category already, and we now know that she's on a high dose statin atorvastatin 80 milligrams and also on ezetimibe 10 milligrams a day. But despite this, her LDL is greater than 70. It's 90 milligrams per deciliter. So 
it's still greater than or equal to 70, or the non-HDL greater than or equal to 100 milligrams per deciliter. Now, what do we do? To get it down to 70, start a PCSK9 inhibitor, because that's what we're aiming for, an LDL of 70. Now, the other way to define a very high-risk category is one major cardiovascular event in two high-risk conditions. Now, let's say she has congestive heart failure and hypertension. Well, she still had acute coronary syndrome. That satisfies one major cardiovascular event. And now she has two high-risk conditions, hypertension and a history of congestive heart failure. So she's still in the very high-risk category because she has one major event and multiple high-risk conditions. All right, let's go on to our summary here. Summary number one, PCSK9 normally degrades LDL receptors in the liver. Number two, PCSK9 inhibitors block PCSK9 in the liver and therefore LDL receptor levels are higher. This is going to lead to increased LDL liver uptake and lower cholesterol. Number three, PCSK9 inhibitors are now part of the 2018 AHA ACC cholesterol guidelines as reasonable add-ons to patients in the very high-risk ASCVD secondary prevention category whose LDL is still greater than or equal to 70 or non-HDL greater than or equal to 100 despite maximum lipid-lowering treatment with a max statin and ezetimibe. Okay, on to our questions here. Question number one, a PCSK9 inhibitor works by blocking PCSK9 from degrading as much LDL receptors, making PCSK9 work better, or inhibiting LDL synthesis in the liver. All right, the answer here is A. Question number two, Mr. Taylor is a 69-year-old male, status post stroke one year ago, and acute coronary syndrome six months ago. He also has a history of hypertension and still smokes. His LDL is 95 despite being on 80 milligrams of atorvastatin and ezetimibe 10 milligrams daily. What is a reasonable next step? A. Double ezetimibe to 20 milligrams a day. B. Add niacin. Or C. Add a PCSK9 inhibitor. Example, evolocumab. And the answer is add a PCSK9 inhibitor. Question number three, PCSK9 inhibitor is actually a monoclonal antibody. True or false? All right, this is true. He's not a superhero. It's an antibody. Okay, well, guess what? This now brings us to the end of this video, PCSK9 inhibitors. Join us now for the next video in the cardiology section. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, press like, and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you from MedBoardVisuals.com.